<laughs> What's up, my babies? We're here in San Diego, California. I just got a message from Brett Contreras earlier today asking me if I wanted to go check out the glue bag, which honestly I had no idea it was so close to where we were staying. Plugged into the GPS and it said that it was about 20 minutes away, so I'm really excited. Brett is one of the first people in fitness that I ever followed. I think I read every single one of his Teen Nation articles way back when. Um, he's just been one of those kind of my idols growing up, so I'm really excited to meet him in person. So who's getting the booty pump? I'm getting the booty pump, YouTube. I'm not against famous men doing things to my butt. <laughs> Yeah, we all know that. Let's not, not put that in the video. <laughs> you can't come to the glute lab and not do a hip thrust, you know what I'm saying? Well, for sure. I'm gonna get nice and low. Put a bar on my hips. You know? I'm sure you're gonna do one of those. <laughs> Uh, rumor has it it's going to be dropping on uh, May 1st on the uh, hybrid apparel store. Thank you so much for having us. So what are you going to do right now? Uh, last squat workout. I can't come to the glute lab and not do a hip thrust, so that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so the classes that you guys run three times a week, they're just like what, hour long classes? No, so it's all uh, like structured training. They start off with a one-on-one -on -one with one of us. Um, we figure out exactly like their needs, their goals, um, and then we write up a structured program. We got a filing cabinet over there with everybody's programs in it. They pull it out. Um, we have up to four clients per uh, per coach each hour, um, and that's sort of how we run it. And they still train hard on their own. Like they do their own workouts, and then here it's like an extra glute workout. Like they don't utilize progressive overload. They're not like. Crushing it. it was like that initially and then it's all bikini competitors and half of their coaches will say like that progressive overload makes you look worse, don't lift hard, don't, it's a constant battle I have to fight with the coaches and I, I'll, I'll be like okay here are the top girls and they're all stronger than you and they push hard and then here's you but, but they won't have nice glutes you know that's gen there's a huge genetic component to that. So if I have like girls coming to me that aren't genetically elite, they have to build it. The only way they're going to do that is progressive overload. We got a lot of these coaches, like popular coaches, that are telling the girls like hip thrusts make your glutes fat. They put fat on your glutes and they wait make your waist blocky. So don't do them. Don't do squats. Don't do that. Deadlifts. Don't do hip thrusts. Just do light single leg and like kickbacks and abduction work and. So it's this bat battle I have to fight. Do you do like kind of personal training before? Yeah, all day. It's very mentally taxing. Oh god, Engaging. it's so mentally taxing. Like when you're, especially when you want to do it right, and you're like, come on, three more. You're like, yeah. oh, you're like m flexing you're muscles. And like three more, come on. Fred, you started writing for Teenage Union before your your PhD, right? I was just telling Caesar. I got my PhD because I, uh, I know I never planned on being a research professor. I don't uh, want to go into academia. I was just curious. Like I'd sit there, I'd have, so that's the scorcher over here. That was my first invention in 2006. And I'd, that was at my gym, Lifts in Scottsdale. That's to the gym was called Lifts. And I'd put everyone on that and they'd go, like after a couple months of training with me, they'd be like, I'm faster. I'm running faster than I ever have. And I'd be, they'd be like, it's from the hip thrust. And I'm like, why the hip thrust? Why not squats or Bulgarian split squats or Nordic ham curls or we do a ton of different, we do everything here. It's why I feel my glutes like on the ground, like I feel more push off. So then I was like, well, why would hip thrust work better, theoretically work better than squats for that? And I'm like, maybe it's because at ground contact, your hip is more neutral, which is the hardest part with hip thrust, whereas squats, the hardest part is deep down in a flex position. So I was trying to understand the biomechanics of that and I wanted to do studies on that and uh, it was out of, purely out of curiosity. I got the PhD just so I could learn more about that question and examine the differences and then it was interesting like I found some cool stuff during my PhD studies like when you go down in a squat you use like 90% as much force as you do on the way up. But in a hip thrust, you kind of do what you do in a deadlift, just like let gravity do the work. You only use a third of the force 
during the eccentric phase is during the concentric phase. You can't dive bomb a squat and then come back up. You have to control the eccentric. Whereas like a hip thrust, it's like if you touch the plates to the ground, you just drop them and then, so it's mostly a concentric lift, you know? Um, yeah, squats have more range of motion. And because of that, they have more, because of the, like so hip thrusts have more concentric force, but squats have more eccentric force. Squats, according to my research, transferred better to jumping, hip thrusts better to sprinting. That's why I got the PhD, it was never to be a professor, it was just to learn, so. So you talk about, you talk a lot about the hip thrust for the purpose of, obviously, hypertrophy when you're training bikini athletes and for sprinters. How about for powerlifters or for strength athletes? So, it's interesting because, like, if I was, if I had more people, like, like in your case, you are a very upright deadlifter and squatter. If you're a conventional round back puller, conventional, no matter what, on your third lift, you're gonna be rounded over. And it, then it makes the lockout a lot harder. Well, I had that realization the first time I pulled 585, I, it was a 12 second lift. And I got to here, I was completely rounded over and I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, hip thrust it, hip thrust it, push the glutes, push the glutes. And then I could pull the shoulders back. So I theorized that it would maybe transfer better for conventional round backers, especially at the lockout. So I started giving, I trained at this powerlifting gym in Phoenix called Revolution, it's in Tempe. We had some strong guys there. And some of them, I'd give them like round back, back extensions off the, like the glute ham developer, and also like hip thrusts. And after like six weeks, they'd be like, God, I'm locking it out. So I feel like that's a strength now. Would it transfer better? I know you've mentioned you feel like hip thrust helped you, but would it transfer to your style as much? I don't know, because you're you're so quad oriented with, also the sumo's kind of a different animal. I feel like the lockout's just different, but the problem is then you start saying that in these powerlifters, like, what am I gonna be like? Hey, Milanichev, you should be doing hip thrust. You know, um, at, that, at that point, at like a certain level, it's so, I mean, how, how long does it take to even warm up for a thousand pound squat? Like, it's so technical. Still, I do think they can help even guys like that to do them here and there, but that, I, the, the more advanced you get, the more it's about specificity, but I do think the masses benefit from them. It's also just so many people, powerlifters in general, get so, um, squats, deadlifts, it's the only thing you should ever do, and it's like half the people get pain with, uh, you get beat up over the years. How all the powerlifting guys I trained with, they all have hip replacement, knee replacement surgeries. We don't want that for the masses, so we should have more variety. That's what I like about you stuff. You're talking about single leg stuff and all that. I also love that you uh, uh, also try to learn about pain science and all that stuff because people think if you hurt yourself or if you have pain the next day, the day after you deadlift, you ha it has to be that you you were in flexion or hyperextension. No, maybe he's compression intolerant, or maybe it has nothing to do with his biomechanics. It's something to do with the biopsychosocial aspect of things. And you have all these coaches that weaken people with all these labels and all these, they don't study, they're not students of pain science and things like that. So it's nice to see someone with some street cred like you talking about this stuff because Sometimes I'll see your post, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> she's going there. That's what people do, right? They just pick someone that they like and then whatever they say goes. Yes. And then they stay so close-minded. It's do. crazy. The answer is so simple and it's not. <laughs> and I want my glutes to be like yours, like people think my be yeah. <laughs> They've definitely grown since you've been uh, in Canada, huh? Yeah. yeah. My squat went up. My squat went up, man. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta stick the back leg out more. Yeah, yeah. there you go. But you lean in and like, you have that's, to that's, that's, that's funny. We do single leg, uh, single leg RDLs off the hammer straight now. And it just works the muscles so much better. I've tried for so many years with a bar, but I can never, I fall on, it doesn't matter how long, you, I fall on two of the reps. You know, even with lunges, if I do like walking lunges, there's two of the reps where I'm like, so we do a lot of our stuff like that off the machines. And one thing that's cool about Root Lab is we have some pretty strong lifters in here. We've had zero injuries in uh, 14 months since we've been open. The trainers have all hurt themselves, but the clients. <laughs> How old are you? Yeah, you're just 
Mom always said, boy, you was born ready to frog Sons. Right, I like a frog pump. Beggars can't be choosers. Do you even know what a frog pump is? Okay, I think you're big together. Ian, get in your frog pump position, bro. Don't get in the here. Start walking away. Hold on, Ian, Ian, join. No, he doesn't have a station. He doesn't have a station. I'm not going to hold your hand. Yes, you are. Pump away. You got to get, hey, don't get your feet back. <laughs> ah, yeah. Keep going. You gotta get on. No girls allowed. You got what you want, Steph? Are you, are you around? Kind of felt a little bit uncomfortable, but I was Plus trying to support them. You know? Some, <laughs> a little bit more high some people ones, love, like, I feel these more in my glutes than anything, but some people don't like them. Uh, yeah. So you're like me, or like you like that ex? Do you, when you squat, do you like a lot of. Uh, really, I like, like no extra rotation when I squat. I have a lot of I'm pretty, pretty straightforward like that. Pretty straight. Yeah, it's weird. Like, don't they don't feel glutes at all during these? I feel them so much, but it all has to do with hip anatomy and track your quads as hard as you can. Usually, you see people turn in a little bit when they squeeze their quads, so then relax them. You now squeeze your quads. See how it turns in a little bit? So, so why is it turning in? 
is that the is there an internal rotation moment arm acting through the patella or is it the rectus femoris to the hip? I don't know why. I like steady biomechanics, but if that's if the quad contraction is causing this to turn in a little bit, then what if knee valgus has nothing to do with weak glutes? It's just putting in your quads, it's like a natural consequence of using quads or putting them in a favorable position. So cr crunch, the gym crunches right down the street and I always wet my can there. <laughs> It's a judge free zone, right? <laughs> um, so I tan there in their little booth for 10 minutes twice a week. So I'm waiting to use it, and it was like an eight minute wait. So I went and did two sets of hip abduction and adduction, okay? And then I used the tanning. So it was like 10 minutes I used the tanning, and then I'm walking back, and I'm like, from, I did two sets of failure with a stack on the adduction. And two sets of like 20. I was like, just walking. I was like, this is going to walk. And I was thinking, you could like take a pro ball player and make him do one sit to fail in the adduction uh, addict machine would ruin his whole game. <laughs> Not like leg extension. I felt so yeah. unstable just walking. Nice. We, we need, why don't we have one of these? That's oh, awesome. You I, I guys do made need it one of those. Place. No way. I that's just designed it myself. So cool. Bryce and I did it. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs>